This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by a cruiserweight, former champion at light heavyweight as well, Dex Spellman. Dex, how you doing? I'm good, Danny, mate. You? I'm very good, thanks. I'm glad we, we could do this. Obviously, we, we were going to do it last week, but we were waiting for the fight to be announced. Um, it's now out there. You're going to be fighting on the big February 18th show, headlined by Lee Wood and Maurizio Lara against um, Chev Clark, uh, yeah, one of yeah. Matchroom's highly touted prospects, former Olympian, of course, as well. How did that fight come about? Um, well, I went sparring uh, down at Carl's gym and um, I was, uh, he, just, he just said to me, he just said, oh, the phone's rang. You want to, uh, they're, they're interested in fighting Chevron Clark. I went, I went, right. And then he says, uh, I said, well, what's a crack? You know, how many rounds? Uh, and then what is it? Is it for anything? So uh, he said, oh, I didn't know if you'd be interested. So I said, yeah, I'm interested. He made a few phone calls. Um, told me, like, what the money did. Debated a little bit on money. Had a bit of to and fro here and there. And then uh, said, look, we'll get it for an English eliminator. Final eliminator for the English title. Um, and then, obviously, we'll, they'll get it on the Nottingham bill. And I thought, well, that's great. You know what I mean? It's not that far from me. Um, and, you know, it's like, it's really a last chance to loom for me. Do you know what I mean? It's um, I don't think I'm going to get many more of these opportunities again. So... You know, I'm putting everything into this and uh, I'm going to be an hard man to beat that night. Yeah, I mean, looking at his record, obviously we know what he did as an amateur, but this is a big leap up in class for him. I know you fought um, Ellis Zorro last year, and he, but he was coming off the boxer tournament win. He'd been in a, a decent level beforehand. For Chev, this seems like a huge step up. Are you surprised that they want this one? Uh, no, because of his age, I think obviously the fast tracking him. Um, I think he's actually older than me. Um, so obviously, he had good amateur pedigree. I don't think he's boxed that long. I remember seeing him in the Olympics. I was impressed with him in the Olympics. I thought he's decent. Um, but it's uh, it's a different ball game. This pro, you know what I mean? I've, I've been around it a long time now. I spy good amateurs. You know what I mean? And and uh, it's very different uh, when you're getting in there. Might be you know three four rounds, a very hard night's work. But this is a ten round fight. And uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not stupid. I know he's a very dangerous man for three, four, five. Or, or you know, there's, there's a lot of unknowns that we don't know, what anyone knows, what he doesn't even know about himself. You know what I mean? So, you know, we're picking, we're, we're getting our confidence from that. Um, you know, I know I can do the rounds. I know I'm tough. I know I can stay in there. And I know I can, I can work at a good work rate. You know, that last one, not taking anything away from Alessandro, but believe me, the, the, the people around me knew I wasn't even 60% for that fight. And to put in a fight, what I just did there, and I was, uh, it was a bit, it was mad to see, to see what I was like the few, the few weeks leading up to it. So I know what I'm capable of, and especially at this way. And if I can get there injury free and as fit as I can, I'm coming straight off the back of a, I've had a very, very consistent year. This will be my fifth fight in, under, in, in around a year. And I've, uh, you know, the six rounders, this last one, uh, the one before last one was a, was a 10 round, uh, was an eight rounder scheduled eight. So, he, he, you know, he's he's not been that active, really. You know what I mean? He's a lot of there's a lot of unknowns about it, and that's where we're drawing our confidence from. Um, we're not stupid. We know it's a very tough fight. We know it's a very dangerous fight. Um, but you know, I know I also know what I'm capable of. And we talk about the Ellis Zorro fight there and the issues you had. It was quite a grueling fight for both of you, but you were out very quickly afterwards. He hasn't been back out yet. Was that why? Because yeah. you knew you hadn't given a hundred percent of your potential in that one. You wanted to be back out quick. Um, yeah, I mean, do you, do you know what? It was like I was going into that, that uh, thinking the same thing as this. You know, it was like a big opportunity, but I knew there wasn't really uh, what's called like there weren't even there weren't really any gold at the end of the rainbow for that. Like it was like you've got an eight round against Elisaro. It won't for anything. Do you know what I mean? Just like it was to get me. I was back on BT, which was nice. Um, and it got my name out there again. So for me, it was not really a, a be all and end all, really. Do you know what I mean? It was a, it was a hard loss for me to take that though, because all my losses had come against top top elite kids. Like, and I just think, I just thought, you know, I, I thought it could have gone either way as well. But obviously, the knockdown cost me. But um, I know what it's like on them TV shows. You know what I mean? It'd be the same with this as well. You know, I'm gonna have to really, really give it to him and really beat him. But it is what it is. I think I'm capable of doing it. You know, so we'll see. And you were back out in December. They got you a, a pretty big lump by the look of it. Yeah, it was. It, do you know what? <laughs> Everyone says this to me. You're fighting heavyweight that? No, I'm not fighting heavyweight. <laughs> I, was, uh, I just like, I, it, it was struggling getting opponents. It was so hard to get opponent. And like, 
the, the, the people at Cruiserweight will, will want too much money. Even like the, the imports coming in, the foreign imports, they, they want too much money. And it's like on a little ticket deal like that, so near Christmas, the money wasn't the money wasn't in the pot. And fair play to um, to Griggs, you know, he stepped up and uh, we we had once again, I think it was like three opponents and. You know these tic- these home show ticket deals are mad at the minute. It's like chopping and changing all the time. The last two weeks, you you don't know where you are. I just leave that down to Carl now and not stress about it. But yeah, it's um it's nice to be you know not, to have an opponent have have your uh, have your focus on one person and uh, and know what know what you're going in against. Um and there's going to be no chopping and changing on this. You know what I mean? We got um we got a bit of a game plan going into it. Whether that works or not, we'll find out when we get in there. When you kind of drop down a level, you seem to be putting these guys away with, I don't want to say it's easy because you're the one in there, but, you know, you, you, it's fairly yeah. comfortable. And then you're having grueling fights with Zorro, but there were problems in the build-up. Where do you assess your own level right now at this stage of your career? Um, I'd love to. I, I'm not, you know, I'm, <laughs> I've, never, I've never had my head in the clouds. I'm not, I'm not a world beater. I never will be a world beater. Is, I am what I am. But I do believe I can get to British level. I do believe I can take a British title. I do believe I could win another English title at Cruiserweight. You know, I'd love to do that, you know, especially with the history with Scott Westgab and stuff, you know, and, and like, I'd love to go on and do that, you know, win a two-time English champion at two weights. That'd be great. Um, would it be enough for me? Probably not. I'd love to even box for a British to get up that level. And I think I'm capable of that. You know, I've seen against, you know, um, Lowell and, uh, and Jameson, you know, great scrap. Um, and I do believe that I belong at that level. Um, and, you know, like I'm sparring top kids. Like I spar Jack Massey quite regularly, um, and I do feel I know sparring, sparring. I'm not stupid, you know. But I do feel like you know I can really get to. I mean, that's an IBO champion. But you know, I do think uh, I do think I can more than all my own at that level. So I don't think I'd be sounding too deluded if I said I, I want to box for a British and possibly win one. You know. So yeah. Well, I think if you get the victory over Chev um, on February the 18th, you'll be right in line for the British. Do you know the reality is. It's a final eliminator for the English. Luke Watkins got the English. So I'm more than confident of being Luke Watkins, you know. And then I get a Luke Watkins, and then then what? I just I could <laughs> before like when I won the English at like heavy. If I sat on it, we, you know, we knew Boatsy was going to vacate. I could have boxed for the British then, but I want I was a little bit hasty. I wanted my rematch against Pit, Shaq and Peters, and a bit naive to be honest, and a bit stupid, and I I rushed into bits, and I and it's, you know you live and you learn. Um, but you know if I get that English title this time, I'm gonna. I'm going to be a lot more clever with it and uh, listen to people around me. Stuff. Now, I have to ask you about a big fight that's taking place before yours um, on the 28th of January. I'm sure you've been asked about this already by a number of other people, but Anthony Yard, um, officially, you might not want to be reminded of this, is the only man to have ever stopped you. I know that was contentious, um, to say the least. But it's there, it's on the record. I mean, presumably he does hit hard at least. Um, but that might be his biggest weapon going in against Arta Baturbia, unified light heavyweight champion and just a formidable operator. What, what do you make of that fight? Yeah, I mean, he's always that uh, he's always had that vulnerability about him, though, Annie Baturbia. You know, he can't, he does get hit, mm. and uh, you know, we've seen against um, you know Callum Johnson. He got put down early on in his career as well. You know, like he can be put down, he can be hurt. And uh, yeah, Yard is a, is a very stiff puncher. Yard's got very good timing, um, quite good feet when he wants to. Um, I don't know how Yard's going to approach this fight. There's a number of ways he could approach it, um, and I'm not sure either. I'm sure they've got a game plan going in. But do you know? I just think, I just think like the top and bottom of it is. I think Batavia will have seen this style. You know, he's had so many it's such a pedigree amateur, and and you know, I don't, I don't know. I just think there's nothing Yard could do what he hasn't really seen. And, you know, it goes back to like what you just said, you know, amateur is completely different to the pros and it is. And, and uh, Yard's got a very nice pro style. I like I like his style to watch. Um, but Baturviev just, I think he's got an underrated jab. That's getting overlooked. And the one big key against Kovalev when he boxed Yard, when Yard boxed Kovalev was the jab. And I think they're going to use that, you know, look back at videos. I do think Yard's improved since then. And I do think he's got more, more of a bit, bit between the teeth since then, you know, seeing, but um, I, just, I just can only see one winner. Um, and look, don't get me wrong, I'm rooting for him. You know, I know he beat me in that, and I'm not, there's no one. <laughs> I swear it to the guy afterwards, I think he's a nice guy, to be honest. He's a very different guy when the camera's out on him, and I do I do quite like the guy. Uh, so, yeah, obviously, I'm rooting for him. You know, he's a Brit, and it's a massive fight. And uh, yeah, and I hope he does win. I hope he pulls it off, but it's a tough job. What do you think are his kind of, what do you think his best approach is? Because I've heard from a lot of people 
he needs to get Paterbiev out of there early. That's his that's his only chance almost. What what do you think? Yeah, because people aren't giving him the credit for doing the rounds. People don't think he can do the rounds very well. You know, he's he's got that bodybuilder physique. Um but he's an athlete. You know, he's an athlete. He, he lives a life. He's always in the gym. Um what he's doing in the gym is well, I don't know. You know, some people question that, don't they? No one really knows that. It's very uh, behind closed doors, isn't it? Um, so we don't know what he's doing. But look, he always looks in good shape and he seems to be living the life. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think he probably, probably could do the rounds. You know, if you watch like when he bought Linden, he, he was pushing it towards the end. He was still in there, wasn't he? I mean, we don't know. Um, but in a fight that of that magnitude, you'll pull it out of somewhere. You know what I mean? I'm sure I'll pull that out somewhere. If you, if you can't do the rounds, you'll make you send do the rounds. Simple as that. So I don't know. I don't think his only option is to is to go out and bulldoze him. But if it, me personally, if I had the, the attributes what he's got and I, and I would be approached it that way. Um, but, you know, he's got enough people around to be telling him uh, the right thing. So, yeah, it's interesting. We'll see. And he's got a home advantage. But when you're up against someone who's had, you know, the breadth of amateur experience that you talked about, does that really matter? Does that factor in? Well, I don't know. We've had some dodgy decisions, haven't we, over here? It might be a big factor. <laughs> it goes the <laughs> I distance. Don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I can't see it going the distance. I can't see that. Surely not. Two big punches. Um, I don't think it's going to matter. Um, he'll have seen it all. Like I said, he'll, he'll have seen it all. And I, I didn't, yeah, it's an interesting one. I can't see it going the distance. So I think someone's getting knocked out uh, one way or another. And you said earlier you do a lot of sparring with Jack Massey, who, as you pointed out, is the IBO cruiserweight champion. He obviously surprised a lot of people that he's moving up to heavyweight to fight Joseph Parker, former world champion, um, on an upcoming mm. show. What did you make of that decision? Yeah, it's a bit mad, that, wasn't it? Fair play, <laughs> though, you know. Get, get us, <laughs> it, it, what an experience and what a, what a shot. And, mate, it's, it's a winnable fight. That's a good fighter. Um uh, but it's up at heavyweight. That, basically saying that though, Jack's a big man. Do you know what I mean? Like he's a big cruiser. Uh, and Connor, Connor uh, sorry, Connor, uh, Josie Parker is a small. He's not very. He's not a big unit at light heavy. So I don't think there'll be much in it size wise. It'll be interesting on the night to see. Um, but I'm really, I'm looking forward to that. I think it's a good fight. I think uh, I think Josie Parker obviously has got the got the beating of him. I, I, I rate Josie Parker. I like watching him box. Um, but I, don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, write Jack Massey off. Do you think, having been in with him, Massey's got the power to command the respect of Parker? Yeah, so he got dog. We only can dig. He's a, like I say, he's a big guy, um, and uh, with them ten ounce gloves on, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure <laughs> if Josie Parker gets it with one of them, we'll think, and, and we know it can be hurt. You know, we, we've seen him be hurt a number of times. So, yeah, there's um, there's a number of ways that fight can end and can be won. And just rounding off, bringing it back to you, a lot of people want to know, um, following you on the build-up to the fight, how can they find you on social media? Yeah, Instagram. Uh, I'm not too active on my Twitter. Um, I don't really use my Facebook, really. I go on there now and again. But, yeah, Instagram's the one. Uh, Dexbalman123. And, uh, yeah, drop me on there. I'd appreciate your follow. Great stuff. Mate, really appreciate your time. Always enjoy talking boxing with you. And, yeah, very best Thank of luck you. for February the 18th. Nice one, Danny. Cheers, mate.